Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you're watching Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. And in the background here is Vatican City. In fact, it's St. Peter's Basilica that you're seeing in the background as I stand here with you to share with you some different biblical verses that I think are very, very profound in regards to the land that we are in. And I wanted you, though, to take and turn with me, if you have your Bible handy with you, to Matthew 26, chapter 26, verse 59 to verse 60. Let's just read this together. It says here, Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council saw false witnesses against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses. I just kind of thought that was odd. They saw many false witnesses, and many came, but they found none. And at the last came two. Now today, earlier, we got to go on a tour through several of the other places here to kind of get a better idea of what it's like here in Vatican City. One of the things that the tourist guide mentioned that we thought was rather interesting, he said for the first time in history, we actually have two pontiffs living here in Vatican City. Pope Benedict discreetly moved back in, as well as Pope Francis. They both live here in Vatican City. Two witnesses, you might say. In this case, there's been many false witnesses that have came, but here at the end, we have two false ones. Another interesting scripture that came to my mind that I really wanted to share with you is found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, looking at verses 1 to 9. And you may look at this a lot different than you've ever looked at it before. Let me share with you what the Lord has placed on my heart regarding this one. He says, this you know, that in the last days, keep in my last days, the days we're living in now, perilous times shall come. For men, it's in the plural, shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Then he goes on to say in verse 3, without natural affection, truce breakers. And isn't it kind of ironic that in Daniel's vision there, there's going to be a covenant made with Israel, and that covenant is going to be broken right in the midst of the week. So they're truce breakers. They're false accusers. Of course, Israel will be blamed for it, no doubt. Incontinent, fierce warriors, war, warmongers, you might say. Incontinent, fierce, despiser those who are good those that really are true Christians, they despise. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. It's not hard to see that when you come here to Rome. Here's what gets interesting in verse five. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. If I've ever seen a form of godliness, I've seen it here in Rome. But denying the power thereof, from such turn away, according to the scripture. Now watch verse 6. This is a very verse that's been so much taken out of context, it's not even funny. It says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins and led away with divers' lusts. By the way, those women are churches. They creep in. Who? These men creep into houses. They creep into the denominational settings. They infiltrate them, much as the Jesuits have, through all the denominations. And they've led those silly women that were laid, led away with divers' lusts. They did not want to retain God in their hearts. They went back to Mother Rome. Then it goes on to say, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're always studying the Word. They just can't seem to come to the knowledge of the truth. Notice verse 8, though. He's going to give you away how many men they are. 
Now as Janes and Jambers withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. By the way, Janes and Jambers, according to fourth century documentation and historical documentation, were the magicians of Egypt. Doesn't take too much looking around in Vatican City here to find all kinds of Egyptian relics and artifacts. Very much paganism at its height. So they withstood Moses. So do these also resist the truth. There's going to be true two genuine witnesses that are coming. You know, somebody made a comment the other day and I thought it was very interesting. They said, you know, I believe, brother, that it's not the literal Moses and Elijah that come back. Well, I actually share the same thought with you. They said, I believe it's two men anointed, perhaps, of the same type of spirit. Well, certainly. Like you've seen with Elijah. And when Elisha came back, they said, does not the spirit of Elijah rest upon Elisha? What is it? It's the same Holy Spirit that was upon Elijah that came upon Elisha with the same anointing, the same nature. Then he goes on to say, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made manifest. Whose folly? The ones that stand up like Janes and Jambers. The two false witnesses. The two false witnesses, perhaps, could very well be Pope Benedict and Pope Francis of Rome. I'm Stephen Bendenoon with the New Institute of Biblical Research here in Vatican City in Rome. Shalom.